What kind of stuff does he uh, does he make? Uh, how was the program you did at Algonquin? Because I was thinking of getting into the same one. It was uh, here. I actually I want to listen to this, so I'm just gonna pause it real quick. Uh, the program was fantastic. I got so much knowledge out of that program. It um, but it was when I tell you it was the hardest consecutive 50 weeks of my life. It, it, it no cap like. No cap. <laughs> like when I tell you it was the hardest shit that I've done, it, it was absolutely, it was absolutely insane. Um, it was just one of those things where I, I was just worked like crazy. Uh, I, I couldn't, you know, I had almost no social life outside of the program because uh, every single, you know, everything that I did was involving the program. Like I would go, I would work uh, in, in, at school, you know, I'd do my schoolwork and then I would, um, I'd come home and then just do more schoolwork or work on more music all the time. Um, but that, that program really pushed me to work as hard as I possibly could at music and never really stop. Like it just really forced me to keep on going and going and going. Uh, just cause there was always something new I had to learn, something that hurt my head to, and, and I couldn't really wrap my head around every day. And I, I never, I, when I'm faced with something I don't understand, I fight to understand it as hard as I possibly can. Uh, so, Yes, I would recommend the program. You're gonna get a lot of knowledge, get your hands on high-end gear, which is what really helped me understand high-end gear, is actually putting my hands on microphones that I, could, if I dropped, I would have to sell my house and my soul and my body to uh, to afford. Um, but learning to deal with stuff like that is, is part of this game, and I would highly recommend it if you are a very motivated and hardworking individual. Uh, I appreciate it, man. It really means a lot. Thank you for playing. I, I'm uh, not going to lie. I was pretty nervous, but after that feedback, I knew I was doing something wrong. And yeah, I had no pop filter at that time. Uh, but thank you. It means a lot. Hey, not a problem, man. Like, you know, I was really nervous when I first started showing people my music. Actually, the f one of the first people I showed my music to was uh, when I was at, this is the story I was going to lead into uh, earlier. And, and don't worry, man, I will, I will get back to the song. I still have it open here. I will not forget. Um, but when I when I was first starting making music, I was uh, I was in Carleton University. This is back in 2015. Uh, I was at Carleton University, and I had been making music for maybe about eight months at the time. Like I was obviously like I could I've been playing piano since I was a young child. Like as soon as I could reach the keys, I was like, oh, let's do this, boys. Um, that was just my love. And all self-taught, all ear taught. I tried to take formal lessons, but music theory was I, never clicked for me. I've passed multiple classes in music theory never retained it for piano uh, but anyway so um i was at uh, i was at carlton university majoring in anthropology minoring in sociology which i very much enjoyed i, I find those very interesting subjects but it wasn't really i i couldn't put my all into it because i didn't care about it uh but what i cared about at the time was music i, I loved making music i loved writing i loved producing i loved i was just slowly getting myself into it and uh, when i was at carlton uh before i even went there i googled do they have a recording studio at carlton and i found out that they did uh, but I couldn't find where it was. And I, I, all I found was the radio studio and I could never find anything else. And I was like, well, I can't get in the radio studio. That's only for radio studio people. And there's high end stuff in there. They lock the doors. They don't let anyone in. So uh, I found another studio. And this was in, if you know Carlton, it's called Southern Hall. Uh, I believe it was on the fifth floor. I was just wandering around one day. Like I searched the entire campus, every floor, every building. I got kicked out of so many floors because they were for admin only. And they're like, well, how the hell did you even get in here? Uh, you need a key card access. And I was just good at talking to people and they just let me into wherever. Uh, so I was just walking around and I found this, I opened this one door and it just, there were like booths all soundproofed with IMAX and Blue Yeti microphones in them. And I was like, uh, okay. So I walked in. And I sat down and I tried to get on the computer in one of them. And these rooms were beautiful, immaculate sliding glass doors, IMAX, beautiful, like soundproofing on the wall, beautiful. Uh, they, were, uh, they were actually being used for profs to come in and record voiceovers for their videos that they would post online for their students. Uh, but also there were video students that would do editing in there when they couldn't edit at home and they needed the editing software or editing stuff for um, that was on those computers. So anyway, I was in there and I was sitting there and I tried to log in and it needed a password. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know the password. So then this girl walks in and she walks into one of the other booths, closes the door, sits down and starts typing. And I was like, okay, time to finesse. So I walk over, I tap on the window, you know, I was just like, I was trying to play it all cute, you know, like try and talk to her all nice, you know, uh, you know, flirt with her a little bit. You know, I chatted with her for a minute and I was like, hey, um, I forgot the password to the computer. 
uh, would you be able to tell like could you tell me what it is like I completely it's, it's just gone from my mind and she's like oh like you know what it is it's edit with me with a capital E I'm like oh yeah Pff, duh my bad sorry about that I gotta go get some work done but you have a great day and I was like we're in boys so I typed it in and uh, I, I got onto the computer then when I remember when I mentioned earlier I was doing all of my uh, all of my work within Google Chrome on Soundtrap uh, that's where I that's where I logged into and all I could go on that computer not have to download anything other than beats to drag them in and then I would record mix master in there that's just what I would do and I would sit there for hours on end in there and then I would go in go in for a couple hours do my thing and then get out before anyone else came in but there was this one time uh, that I went in there and I was sitting down and doing my work uh, I was just you know playing some music I guess it was a little bit too loud and someone comes in bangs on my door and he's like I'm like what and he opens the door and he's like hey um there's no one scheduled to be in here right now what are you doing i was like uh i'm just working and he's like what are you working on i'm like oh, i'm just working on music that's just what i'm doing and he's like what are you talking about this isn't for music this is for video editing and for props like why are you in here who are you and i he was like show me your student card i was like okay so i showed him my student card it was a younger guy maybe like he couldn't have been more than 32 33 uh and uh beard looked like he, he had a name tag on for carlton so i was like hey obviously he works here I gave him my student card and he looks at it he's like okay gives it back to me i put it in my pocket and he's like well man what are you doing here roland like why, why are you here and i'm just like well i'm making music i found this studio i've been coming here for the past couple like uh, for the past couple weeks and you know ever like once in a while during the week and you know no one ever said anything about it and he's like how'd you even get the password to the computer only video students can get that and i'm just like oh i don't know and so anyway he was like well any well, you can't be in here log off this computer and just go like you can't be in here so i was like okay fine i log off i leave next day i'm right back so i go in and i'm in there again i'm doing my thing i guess i was playing the music too loud or he just was like i, I don't trust this kid and he comes back and i'm still there i'm still there doing my thing and he's like what I, I told you to leave and never come back what are you doing here and i'm just like i'm sorry i'm working on a mixtape i'm really like he's like no you're not working on a mixtape you're leaving and i'm like okay fine so then he kicks me out i get i, I go up what did i do the next day right back i went right back and i started skipping classes i started like i was there all the time and um he kicked me out maybe like 10 15 times and he was but on the 15th time he's like all right i keep on kicking you out of here what are you doing in here show me this music i want to hear it and i'm like okay fine so i play him one of i play him a song uh, i at that point i had pretty much finished my mixtape uh, this is my first ever mixtape if you go on my soundcloud uh it should be soundcloud.com slash roland the prince um if you go on soundcloud the first mixtape i ever put out called village hidden in the sound uh which is a naruto reference of course or vhis uh that's the mixtape i was working on at the time uh, i can play some of it after if you guys really want but um he was like play me some of this music i was like okay so i played him the first song he said nothing the entire time whole song plays and he's like play me another one i'm like okay his face was stone faced. I was like, okay, like, well, geez, what do, what do I do? So I play him the song and I'm just sitting there awkwardly. Like I had maybe, I hadn't really showed anyone this music. Like I, nobody really knew what I was doing. And this dude's just standing there stone faced, listening to this music and like saying nothing. I'm like, okay, all right. I end up playing him like four or five songs and he says nothing. So like a good 20 minutes has gone by. And this guy has said like 15, 20 minutes gone by. He's listened to these songs. He said nothing. And I'm like, okay, I play him that one. He's like, all right that's enough i was like okay cool and he's like i like it i i really like it listen man if you want to keep on doing this i'd rather you be in here making music and doing something that actually is productive and makes you happy than it just sit here empty not a lot of students come in here anymore the reason they bought this is because students weren't excuse me mandated to get laptops and now they're uh they're mandated to get laptops so we don't really use the studio unless it's for exam purposes so if you want to come in here you can just email me every time you want to come in here and i was like okay so i was started to go in there sorry i had to flick some garbage uh i was started to go in there every single day every day uh, i had some classes that started at 8 30 in the morning and i lived uh in, I, I lived way far away from from carlton like it would take me an hour and a half to bust down there every day uh, and like on a in the winter, sometimes it would take me two hours just because of how slow the buses are. So I would wake up at four o'clock in the morning to get on the bus for uh, four thirty in the morning to get down there for six a.m. 
Uh, and then I would work in the studio from 6 a.m. until 8.30 a.m., go to my class, then come back to the studio for my break between some of my classes. Uh, and then there was a sociology class I didn't feel like going to, so I never went to it. I would sit in the studio and keep on making beats or recording. Uh, and then I would skip all these classes and I start, and my grades obviously started to fall a bit because whenever I was at school, I was in the studio. I was, anytime someone texted me, they were like, hey, where are you at? Studio, where, where are you at? Studio, studio, studio. And that's all I did, all I did. I, I skipped classes and in my, it got to the point where in my second year, I obviously passed my classes, like I just scraped by by doing the bare minimum at home. But like the second, my second year, my, my I started skipping classes. I skipped exams. I skipped like tons of stuff just to go to that studio. I didn't care about school at that point. School was just the formality that got me into the studio. So, you know, that uh, I got, you know, that was really what made me fall in love with music and, you know, start doing it. like my entire life was just music and it's just that was it. So anyway, I started doing that and, you know, I was emailing this guy daily like, yo, can I come in tomorrow? 6 a.m. Tomorrow, 6 a.m. Tomorrow, 6 a.m. And he was like, sure, man, no problem. And he wasn't even in there. It got to the point where he knew that I knew what I was doing so much that like he was just like, yo, there's a janitor in the building. Just ask him to unlock the door like you can go in. It's whatever. I was like, cool. Like he wouldn't even show up until like 9 a.m. every day. And I'd be in, have record, done a full session, recorded, uh, and then printed the song, put it, like saved it and left. And, you know, I'd, I'd work on it more on my laptop because obviously it was access to Google Chrome. So I could just go in uh, and work on it later. But anyway, that was like the first time I really showed someone my music and it gave me like a motivation to move forward. I totally forget the main point that I was trying to make with that story. But, uh, you know, if, if, you have anything in your life that rivals that that you love so much that you're willing to skip what you're paying thousands of dollars to go and do in order to to do that you know it's it really shows you that this is what you love uh that's not so about the story oh thank you man it's uh, you know it was it was just like I, I nothing opened my eyes to how much i love music more than that moment like when he first was like i heard it and he's like i love it you just have to email me to come in here. Cause he like, he was fully within his right to kick me out all the time, fully within his right. Like, like, you know, and, and it got to the point where like, I got, like, I still remember that dude's name. I still remember his name. His name was Hasi El Dib and Hasi. I still remember his face. Uh, I think I still have his business card from Carlton, but someday I like, if I ever make it big, if I ever make it bigger than like my biggest achievement is, is right here. It's blues fest. Um, that's a, one of Canada's biggest uh, music festivals. Over 30,000 people show up to that. I performed at that with Machine Gun Kelly, Brock Hampton, Foo Fighters, uh, you name it, like Cody Shane, City Fidelia. There's a bunch of people. Um, that was my biggest accolade. If I ever make something bigger than that, where, you know, I'm making a lot of good money, uh, I want to, you know, find this guy and see if he's still working at Carlton, whatever it is. And I really want to like, be like, yo, you pushed me. Like I, this wouldn't have happened without you. And, you know, or these two albums right here wouldn't have happened without you. And, you know, I really, someday in the future, I really want to, you know, surprise him with a car or something. Or I don't know. 